In the Middle Ages, European logic and mythology already conjectured the existence of a great land of the south, or Terra Australis, to balance the weight of the land masses of Europe and Asia in the northern half of the planet. In the 15th century, the Spanish trying to find this place. In 1567, Alvaro de Mendaña discovered the Solomon Islands to the northeast of Australia, and this encouraged Spain to send more expeditions in search of the lost continent. The Spanish explorer Luis Valles Torres navigated between Australia and New Guinea, giving his name to the Torres Straits. But the Dutchman Dirk Hartog was the first European to land on Australian soil 72 years before the English pirate Dampier convinced the crown of his country that this land was worth the trouble. And history would determine it would come under British rule. All this history and much more is written in the remains scattered offshore and which now provide a home for some of the underwater life of the cold coasts of southern Australia. But if we travel north along the west coast, we come to a very different type of ocean floor. Following the underwater tracks of the manta rays and sea eagles, we enter the warm tropical waters which everyone thinks of as rich in life forms, but which in reality hide great surprises which we are going to discover. The deep blue little by little turns to turquoise. We are in a transition zone between the two types of water. The strength of the waves is broken by the first corals that protect warmer, calmer waters. The bacteria that break down the organic material rapidly reproduce in these waters which are warm but still receive the gift from the Antarctic. Matter is deposited while the energy of the sun gives rise to an atmosphere very similar to that which existed at the time when life on Earth was just beginning. Here in Shark Bay, these strange forms bear the mark of a decisive moment in the history of our planet. They are called stromatolites and their structure is the result of enormous groups of cyanobacteria, greenish-blue bacteria which, if there is plenty of sunlight, produce oxygen from the water. This may seem like just one more natural process, but if we consider they have been doing this for 3,500 million years, we will realize that they represent the origin of the evolution of all existing animals. From just water and light, they filled the atmosphere with breathable oxygen. Without them, we would not be here. In this area, the cyanobacteria produce a sticky mucus which traps the particles of sand. This structure is then strengthened by calcium carbonate carried in the seawater. But these traumatolites are not the only phenomenon exclusive to Shark Bay. On the beaches of Monkey Mia, there are frequent meetings between two of the most intelligent mammals in the world. Here, the wild bottlenose dolphins are used to contact with humans and swim close by them. 
Such is the attraction that guards are necessary to ensure that people do not frighten the marine visitors. But this relationship is more than a mere curiosity. The Australian Aborigines have traditionally spoken of dolphin energy. According to them, they achieve spiritual enlightenment through telepathic mind-to-mind -mind communication with the cetacean. They call it the dream of the dolphin. According to this ancient legend, human beings are descended from dolphins which never forget they are related to man. What's certain is that the dolphins come of their own free will and seem to prefer the company of children to that of adults. People that come to see them say they feel something special, a sense of peace, a strange happiness they can't explain. The dolphins even bring their young here, who thus learn to trust humans. But why do they do it? From a strictly biological point of view, it makes no sense unless we introduce such unscientific terms as affinity or interspecies friendship. All the experiments carried out have demonstrated the evident improvement of people with problems in relating to their surroundings when they are given therapy sessions with dolphins. It has been scientifically proven that dolphins have saved the victims of shipwrecks by carrying them or leading them to the beach that they use complex language and are able to establish close relations with humans. Perhaps the dream of the dolphin is much more than a myth. Perhaps once again the Australian Aborigines long ago realized a zoological truth which has not yet been discovered. Very close to Shark Bay in this region where the Antarctic plankton meet the tropical warmth lives another incredible animal. It is not related to the seals or the whales. It has its own style and is called the dugong. The dugongs belong to the family of Sirenians or sea cows and are the only entirely vegetarian marine mammals. To maintain their 300 kilos in weight, they need to feed constantly on the underwater pastures, and it is a complete mystery how they manage to live on a diet with such a high salt content. Their upper lip directs the seaweed into their mouths. Their skeleton is heavy and dense to prevent them from floating too much. They live a calm life of around 70 years in these mixed waters. As we move further up the west coast of Australia and approach the Tropic of Capricorn, corals are more in evidence and start to form reefs. The coral reef is a very different ecosystem from that of the cold waters of the south. The water is filled with light and color. The intense activity we can see is not the result of a marine current carrying nutrients. The coral reef is like a gigantic self-contained organism in which energy passes from one layer to the next with just two essential ingredients, the sun and the sea. The corals are specialists in poor waters like these, provided they are clear. If we dive down just a few meters to where there is less sunlight, we can see that the variety of species quickly diminishes. Nearer the surface, the coral world flourishes in all its splendor. Over 2,000 types of animals live here with strange relationships among the different species, all of them adaptations to ensure survival in such a competitive society. This is a pair of clownfish who choose to live where others die. 
They confidently swim between the stinging tentacles of this anemone, knowing no harm will come to them. The tentacles are armed with poisonous cells, which would mean certain death for any other fish. The clownfish are immune because the anemone does not recognize them as foreign bodies. They are like part of the family. The entire reef is full of specialists ready to eat anything edible. The trigger fish like this one can, with their tough mouths, attack any reinforced structure no matter how strong it is, and the parrotfish can even crush the corals. If you're among polyps, the best thing is to look like them, and we already have met the master of imitation. The cuttlefish also lives here just one more piece in the intricate puzzle of the reef. And, as always, they have to hide from the local marauding hungry mouths, in this case the grouper. They are members of the Serenid family in virtually all the waters of the world. Their rear fins are a sure sign they can accelerate very rapidly if necessary.